Hi, I'm Fred McNeil, and you're watching QAC TV7. Thank you for being with us. We're watching a show called Conversations with Fred. Every week I bring in somebody of interest to you from the community. It might be the county or one of the towns, and they tell you things about themselves, and more importantly, things that will help you. I have one of my favorite people here today, Steve Walls. I've known the Walls family, your mom, since the 1970s. Your mom was such an efficient chief financial officer out of Chesapeake College. I was the director of adult ed. She'll tell you now. She kept me out. She'd come down about once a week. Fred, you've overspent your budget already. <laughs> and that was a week after. So first of all, I, I want to share this with the public. And you and I talked off air. Being a town administrator or town manager is a difficult job. And I found dealing with you and the town. I mean, you picked up, when they missed the trash, you picked up my trash. I didn't have a cover for my sewer or water thing. So you did a great job. And you're going to retire. Which is exciting. Steve, how about share everybody with, a lot of people don't know, hey, Wall's family's been around. I had a great ball player as a dad. I, uh, I work for the county. Share a little bit about Steve Walls, if you would, please. Sure. Uh, the, uh, actually, uh, you know, was, I guess, born in the Chestertown Hospital, but okay. I actually, you know, could say I was born and raised in Centerville. <laughs> Some of these and, people are going to call you a chicken necker and throw something yeah, at you. Yeah, right. Of course, you know, back then, I mean, you know, there's only hospitals there's in Chestertown or Easton, yes. so, yeah. you know, even though you might say you were born in, in uh, Centerville, you, you actually had to go outside of yeah. town limits to, uh, to go to be born. But, uh, but yeah, I lived right in what they call the old Quimby Apartments, right okay. there on the corner of Liberty and Water Street. All right. Mom and Dad lived there for about four years till Dad built the house set on John Brown Road, and then I, you know, certainly moved to uh, John Brown Road and lived there for all my years till I was in college. And now, did you go to Queen Anne's County High or Centerville High? Went to uh, Queen Anne's County High, class of uh, 1973. Okay. So, uh, and then, uh, um, you know, went on to college and, uh, you know, ended up coming back, um, started working for the county. Well, we know. I originally uh, had, had planned on, uh, you know, going into uh, you know, the state park system. That okay. was kind of what, what I had thought my aspirations were. And uh, I ended up coming back and just sort of doing an, an internship with Bob Salit um, here in with Centerville. The with with, with, is, with yes. uh, Back then, he was the parks director. Okay. From and, Wilkesboro, uh, Pennsylvania, Bernie Sadesky's right-hand man. He right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he uh, worked, worked with him, you know, uh, over uh, a short period of time, you know, doing my internship. And uh, and then I you know, ended up asking if they had a job, and they said, yeah. So I started out working on what they called those CEDA grants. Okay. Um, I was a CEDA employee. Yes, yeah. I got my graduate right. degree. Yes. And then, uh, then the county and ended up hiring me full-time for the park system. Uh, worked for them for 16 years, and uh, I always, uh, you know, was was fond of uh, construction work. My dad worked for State Highway for well, about 40 was years. Your dad a, a real good baseball player, or do I have the one? Um, yeah, my dad uh, was was known for for being, I guess, a fairly decent hitter. Yes. Um, he actually was a pitcher at the time that he was was signed by the Washington Senators. He was a senator. Yes. That's my team. Yeah. Griffith Stadium, 1950s. Yeah. So he. He, uh, he was signed with them in 1954 after he had been out of school. Uh, he graduated in 52, but he was out for a little while. And uh, so he went to the uh, camp they had down there in the minor leagues That's in right. Florida. And he was originally a catcher. My grandfather was a catcher as well, but uh, uh, Coach Selby converted him to a pitcher. Oh, okay. So now John so Selby out at the high school, mm -hmm. right? Yes, okay. So um, he, uh, he went down there as a pitcher, and then... Uh, um, he uh, basically hurt his arm, oh. and uh, that ended his uh, his baseball career in baseball. Okay. So he came back and just played in the Eastern Shore League. Once he got his you know, arm at least you know at a, at a decent point where he could still play other positions, and okay. I don't know that he pitched a whole lot. But after he was that. a real good major league prospect type thing for the Washington Senators. He would have played right. with my team. I would have seen him at Griffith Stadium if he had made it. Yeah. Now, since and of course, get, back then his yeah. contract was two hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> that was it. Yeah. And what was his signing bonus? Nothing. <laughs> no signing bonus. Well, the Griffiths family, as you family knows, was very tight when it came to money. They did not pay well. Whether you're right. major in the stars, Roy Seavers, or some of the great senators' players would always complain. Uh, complain they weren't paid well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, since so, you, so because yeah. of the construction uh, mm -hmm. background that my dad had, you know, I I just sort of said, well, you know, I'd like to try at the public works department. And uh, so I 
was fortunate enough to become the director of public works and was there for 18 years and certainly was involved in a lot of big projects and we closed all the landfills we you know we got water and sewer Pretty um, important in job installed in uh, bay city and cloverfields because that had been uh, on the health department's uh, um, master plan to get those two communities uh, put water and sewer in them so so we got some of those big things accomplished you know during those 18 years okay now did you work 30 total years for, did you retire from well, the actually county? Uh, worked 34 years oh, for 34 the county years. yep okay. and they were of course offering our early retirement plan uh, back in 2011 okay. so uh, so I just decided to go ahead and uh, take a break take take, uh, take a break from the now, county Steve, before we go into some more things Let's give your mom some equal time. Yep. Your mom was the uh, either comptroller, chief financial officer. So you also, I understand, uh, your mom, if I remember, I was a terrific golfer. Am I she uh, she did play yeah. golf as well. Yes, okay, and very yeah. good golf. She uh, she did a very good job at playing golf. Yeah, okay, was your mom a local? She was a local. Yep. Okay. She um, she's her maiden name was Chance. Okay, um, she was a Chance. Uh, actually. Uh, uh, her, uh, her dad, uh, Grayson Chance, uh, he was a farmer, mm -hmm. so we did have farming in our background. And uh, he actually was a three-term county commissioner. What's your name, Queen Anne's um, County? Yeah, back from 1954 to 1966. Oh, wow. So really, I've had government experience, you've you got, know, in, in, in my DNA, blood. you got don't you? Oh, okay. yes. Now, Steve, right. after you left the county, okay, had a good mentor, Bob Salit. I mean, when we first moved here, Bob Salit was like Mr. Fix-It. I mean, if you had any problem, go see Bob Salit. And somehow he knew the right phone call to make, and he'd help you out any time. And Bernie Sadusky, Al Romanowski, who else was there? Bernie Matiska, they all grew up, I right. think, in Wilkesboro. And I, there was a mafia. There was a Wilkesboro mafia in Queen Anne's County, I think, for about, what, 15 or 20 yeah, years. Yeah, there was. It was between Bernie at the Board of Ed, Salit uh, with the county. Uh, hey, they, they ran the county, I think. Mm hmm now, Steve, after you left the county, was there a break, or did you go right into the town um, Actually, job? I uh, um, started working for towns after okay. that. Oh, uh, towns? Yeah, okay. I, I was actually the uh, town manager for um, what started out to be three towns, okay. um, because each town really couldn't afford like their own town manager. Thing, yeah. yeah, they called it a circuit rider right. program. Right. And so I actually was uh, uh, Sellersville, Millington, and Betterton. Oh, okay. um, Betterton decided to... Uh, Right after I started, I uh, almost, almost want to say within like a month or two after I started, they wanted to have their own town manager. Okay. So, uh, so they ended up hiring their own town manager, and then I broke away from working there, and then just stayed with uh, um, Millington and Sellersville for about a year and a half until Town of Centerville had um, a public works director position open up in 2012. Applied for it. Um, was able to uh, to be hired as their public works director, and then I guess about six months later um, there was a vacancy in the, for the town manager position. Okay. I've been town manager since January 2013. It was meant to be that you stayed in Queen Anne's County, right? Yeah. If you cross your fingers, you won on that deal, didn't you? Yeah. It was a very good deal. Steve, I always ask everybody whether they're elected officials or people like you, uh, county or town administrators. I remember uh, you handled a situation. Remember when they were doing the roads in Centerville the last time? Everybody fussing about the traffic, and you kept saying, calm down, we're going to get through it. You know, complete, I don't know they complained about the dust, or they couldn't figure out the lights. You know, hey, steady or right, and you're going to be okay. Right. But you had, it seemed like to me, you had the ability to look at the long term. Hey, guys, you might have a little bump here and there. But it's eventually going to work out. I mean, is that how you do everything? Yeah, well, I mean, I, it did help that I had you know, some experience dealing with some controversial things when we closed the landfills and went with the negotiated with the other counties for the regional landfill and and all those water sewer projects we had. You know, down on Ken Island and trying to plan for the future of. Uh, Route 8, you know, right, which right. didn't happen you know, during my tenure at Public Works, but, you know, they eventually, eventually did did happen. But, you know, you, you certainly that experience of, you know, dealing with all this long-term planning and all the logistical things that you go through to make a project work, um, you know, we were involved in... Uh, the uh, the opening uh, construction and the opening of the the 911 center that we mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. So, just all the things that typically come up with construction projects, you just you know, you know, kind of learn to. You're going to be bumped. Figure out, you know, yes. you, you know, had good staff and had you know good consultant help. You know, somebody like Mike Whitehill who, you know, knew the town Still inside and out. Town, you know, right, with yeah. all his years of experience at McCrone, um, you know, we just figured out a plan and. Uh, 
State Highway was very cooperative in working with us and delaying their next mill and overlay to give us a chance to you know get the project in. So, and the interesting thing is, I, I tell this story. Um, you know, all the years I worked for the county, and then, like I say, it was 34 years, I would always hear that the State Highway Administration, you know, they would be sort of uh, like a, almost a little bit annoyed that the town of Centerville would never fix their water and sewer lines <laughs> really? because every time they came in and do an overlay, there were water leaks okay. a week or two later. Yeah. So it was interesting hearing that story all those years, and then I ended up coming to work for the town. You're a hot potato. And I, and I got to be the one that got to fix it. Got to fix it. So, uh, well, so, I, just remember so I never all... really expected that was going to be in the cards for okay. me, but that's the way it turned out. I just remember a couple of times, I think I bumped into you to the creamery while this was going on, and everybody, you know, oh, the dust, the me, 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 and then you just say, calm down. We're going to get through it. And now everyone's bragging about how nice downtown Centerville looks like, whether it's right. street lights, the sidewalk, or the roads, and they're just delighted. So patience is a virtue. It worked out. Yeah, it? That's, uh, that's really what it takes uh, because, you know, every controversial project always has, you know, that initial surge of everybody's upset, you know, not sure what's going to happen and what, you know, what's, uh, you know, all the little inconveniences that occur with it. Okay. You know, then you get to a point where you see some progress, and you know things start leveling off. You don't have as many complaints you know, or concerns come forward. And then, you know, once you get it over the halfway point and you get through through the the, it's gonna work the bulk of it, in the end, you always know what the outcome is going to be. Is everybody's going to be pleased with the outcome? Of course they are. You just got to work your way through it. Gary Fields, I don't know whether you remember that name or not. He used Absolutely. to help Thad Kelvin over to the transport transportation of the board of ed. But the week before schools would start, every year, people would run around like chickens are in their heads are going to, a chicken with his head chopped up. Oh, not enough buses, not enough drivers, not enough this, not enough toilet paper. Gary would always calmly come in and say, I guarantee you, on the first day of school, the buses will ride, the teachers will teach, the food will be there. That's kind of, how, it's going right. to work out, stay calm. Steve, I, get, I, I have a lot of fun. Uh, I've asked town commissioners and I've asked uh, county commissioners, how about as you look back at Queen Anne's County in your lifetime now, being a lifetime resident, what's the biggest change you've seen? Let's start with the county and then we'll go to town. What's the biggest change? If you would look back and say, Fred, the growth on Ken Island, or the, what do you think, what's the biggest change you've seen in your life? Our change yeah. is? Yeah, I, and I would say probably the, the growth is, is the biggest thing uh, mm -hmm. because, yeah, um, the growth that occurred in Ken Island and, and Graysonville, and it certainly has worked its way up here, you know, around the Centerville area with the two large subdivisions that were built in the early 2000s in Centerville. So that's probably, you know, the biggest thing, the you growth. know. You know, and the growth, what came along with it was the whole Reach to Beach program, you know, that was done on the transportation side and, you know, the improvements that were done on Route 50. And, and so, you know, I, I would, would think that and I've actually thought about, you know, my grandfather, you know, who, like I mentioned before, was county commissioner back in the 50s and early 60s, you know, it's like, you know, what would he think? Wouldn't you like to sit down you with know, him? What would what, what he feel? Because he oh. certainly saw some growth, maybe yes. a little bit back in his day, but not, not anything not like what, what we've witnessed. And, uh, you know, just what his thoughts would be, because, like I say, he was a farmer and, uh, you know, enjoyed the, the great outdoors and the open space. And uh, to see, you know, that, that many people and the road system, you know, get to the point where you have all the fast traveling cars. 5301 is, is like the Beltway now, I can barely, yeah. but now how about the town, I know Centerville, my village, I remember all the fussing going on, oh, Symphony Village, and at the other end, Northbrook. Now we have these, this vibrant addition to the town of Centerville. What those people bring to the community, I think it's fantastic, whether it's local sure. churches, whatever it might be. How about, what are the big changes you've seen in Centerville? What, what do you think the biggest change might be? Uh, as, as far as what's occurred mm -hmm. in, the yeah. past, yes, in the past, um, I would say it's you know just seeing some some new things occur like the YMCA, um, which would be pretty know, exciting, right? I mean, Next I, mean, us, I, mean, right? I yeah. mean, the people have been great. You know, I mean, I've always enjoyed you know working with with the people and and all the people that you know have worked uh, you know with the town as far as the staff and and the elected officials and and really the community. I mean, I think that's one of the probably the main things that I've enjoyed the most and have seen the, you know, the biggest change is that, you know, there's some new things coming to the, to the town. Um, 
and looking forward to seeing what the why, you know, how much that helps out, um, you know, well, I think activities so. for people to, yeah. to participate. As you and I become old men, I think it's going to be exciting. Next year we're going to have a YMCA. We might have a new, might have a new board of ed meeting uh, building here. Mm -hmm. And Lord knows, it would be make the old Centerville High School could become like a little museum. Right. We've got the Carter property. I think the next ten years are going to be exciting in Centerville. Yeah. And I think it's been been very. Uh, uh, sort of uh, exciting to see that you know some of the older buildings in town you know they have been fixing them up you yes. know and the town has been fortunate to acquire some some grant money yeah, the, 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 the facade yeah. Yeah, facade, facade grants yeah. so it's kind of neat to see you know the, the downtown areas start to you know be restored and little by little i mean still there's some other older buildings that you know need some additional work but but little by little you know you're you're seeing those improvements and and that's great i don't know i just think and it's been under your supervision but there's a, there's a little regrowth in Centerville. I mean, all of a sudden, I think the restaurant numbers has gone up. Now we, I mean, last night I got tacos from one of those mobile uh, trucks that go around. Right. Yeah, guys did a wonderful job, the, the committee of people that did it. I know you helped them out with that first Friday concept. I mean, I, I haven't seen that many people in Centerville since a block party years ago, right? That was pretty yeah. exciting. Exactly. Uh, it looks like to me we're going through a little renaissance and because uh, downtown area is a just a physically attractive right. place and i and i do think um, you know centerville is starting to become a little bit more of an attraction for people that you know that do want to you know come here to live um, they may still work across the bridge mm -hmm. um, but uh, but i think there's a little, a little bit of a sort of a, um, interest in, in people wanting to, you know, a couple of these uh, properties we have in town, the Carter Farm, the yes. Turpin Farm, you know, there is some activity uh, being uh, discussed with the Planning Commission. Um, so it does look like, you know, there may be some additional houses in, in the near future. Yeah, pretty exciting, right. I think, from some of the planners. Now, I see if I also ask everybody, if you had a magic wand and I made you the Wizard of Oz, what would you like to see in the next five or ten years in cinema? Do you have, I mean, do you think, do you have a, con hey, there's some things, Fred, I'd like to see here. Um, I think, I think that one of the main things that the, the, the council is going to have to, uh, you know, work, work with uh, is um, the expansion of the wastewater treatment plant. Okay. Um, you know, and we'd like the county to reach our capacity. Right. Yes. It's, it's, you know, it's nearing its capacity. You know, we're at 83%. And, uh, um, you know, it, you know, we certainly have some capacity left for some additional businesses at the business park, as well as you know, for some residential growth. But you know, there's only a limited amount left. Something's you know, got to be done in this. Right. Area. I mean, we're we're estimating about you know, equivalent to like what would be three three hundred um, you know homes. Okay. You know, um, is probably all we have have left. Capacity for and uh, so, you know, I think that's going to be you know the big issue uh, you know with the state. Um, all the state planning initiatives that say, that, you know, they don't want you know, the growth to be out in the farmlands anymore. It's got to be close to where the infrastructure is. Well, the town is going to be one of those places. So I'm hoping that the town will be able to get, um, you know, a fair amount of grant money to help um, pay for you the plan expansion yeah. because, you know, um, I, I think just long term, that's what the town's going to need if they uh, increase you know, that sewer capacity. Want, want to be able to, uh, you know, sustain you know the the quality of life because you know it's it's just going to get to the point where businesses might want to expand and if you don't have the sewer capacity for you a business to expand mm -hmm. i mean why would a business want to stay here if yeah. they don't have the ability to expand so i think that's going to be key to uh, to even helping businesses in the future i always tell people i grew up in montgomery county and rockville maryland in the 50s we lived right on the dc line a big Sunday trip for us, Steve, in the 1950s, my dad would leave the house and there was no Rockfield Pike, there was just a road. The Rockfield Courthouse was exactly like the courthouse here. And Rockfield, which is now, I'm sorry, Washington, D.C. extended in the 50s, was a quaint little town and it was a, they would have a picnic on the courtyard. I think, you tell me, I think because we're a county seat, no matter what we do, it's got to grow. And if, it's right. going to be, I, mean, I don't know, it's going to, you know, we're going to get, like you say, as soon as we get this sewer thing, but it's got to grow. It's a county seat. Right. I mean, I don't know how you feel. Now, Steve, let me ask you, because we're almost out of time. Uh, congratulations on your retirement. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to warn you right now, it's the best time of your life. Tell Dee, honey, we're going to have the life. You're like a teenager <laughs> with money and a license. You can do anything you want. Do you have any uh, 
plan, and you're going to your work till what January? January fifth. Okay. And yep. you, do you have plans after that, or not um, sure yet? Initially, uh, I do plan to go down and uh, spend some time with mom. You know, she goes to Florida. You know, right. during the winter months. So I told you she was a smart woman. Uh, she knows. <laughs> so do do plan to go down and spend some time with her, okay. and uh, okay. you know, eventually, uh, you know, our long term plan is to become residents of Florida okay. ourselves. And uh, so we, uh, you know, I don't think we're going to be down there, you know, you know, 12 months out of the year, every year, but, 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 but we do, least do like to establish January. residency yes. and, you know, be able to still come back and visit family and, and travel some. Yeah. Okay. Well, Steve, look, I want to personally thank you, the whole Walls family, your mom, obviously, but you too, as a town and county person, anytime I needed help, whether it was Mr. Nesbitt, didn't get his trash picked up or his grass was growing. I don't know if we ever solved that problem or not. But we really appreciate that. That small town, Queen Anne's County, Centerville type service, you don't get any more in America. I'm sorry, I, you know, I'm not, and I'm not apologizing for it. I'm glad we have it, all right? All right. So please, McNeilis would like to thank you for that, okay? Thank you. Good luck. You tell D, young lady, I'm going to play a lot of golf. Does she play golf? Um, she did at one, well, at she one point. Real but she better learn she, she, she kind of kind of put that on the back burner. But, yeah, I would like to get back okay. into playing golf again. Well, both of you, best of luck. Thank you. And between now and uh, retirement date, uh, thank you for breaking in our new town man. I understand you're mentoring him. Yes. And that would be a big help. It's nice to have somebody there when you get a new job and say, hey, here's some things to help you and that type of thing. But, again, thank you for your great service. Enjoy retirement. I hope you get retirement checks for 30 more years. Does that sound good? Okay. Thank you, Sam. Thank good. you for coming to, in a busy day, all right? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. My name's Fred McNeil. Thank you for watching QAC TV 7. My time's up. Thank you for your time. We're going to see you next time.